Hey guys, welcome back and today we are going to discuss about the anatomy and physiology of ear, nose and throat. First we will see nose. Ear, nose and throat or auto, rhino, laryngeology is an important and diverse speciality. Nose is the primary organ for filtering out particles in inhaled air and it also serves to provide first line immunology defense by bringing inhaled air in contact with mucus coated membranes that contain immunoglobulin. Your nose is a structure that sticks out from middle of your face and that is known as the entrance to your respiratory system. So nose is the entrance to your red respiratory system. It warms and filters the air you breathe. It also houses your olfactory organs which give you your sense of smell. Words that start with nasal or rhino usually refer to your nose. Now we will see the parts of nose. So when we will study that, just compare this description with the image, then your understanding will be easy. First part is external nose. A triangular shaped projection in the center of the face. That is external nose. Then nostrils. There are two chambers divided by septa. So that is the left and right nose or nostrils. Septum is made up of cartilage and bone and covered by mucous membrane. So in between two nostrils, that means right nose and left nose, we can see the bony part and the bony part is known as septum. And it is made up of cartilage and bone. The nasal passages. Nasal passages line with mucous membrane and a tiny hairs that is known as cilia that helps filter the air. Then sinuses. Sinuses are the air filled cavity and we have four pairs of air filled cavities that are also aligned with mucous membrane. So these are all the major parts of your nose, external nose, nostrils, septum, nasal passages, passages and sinuses. So sinus, what is sinuses? As I said, sinuses are air filled pocket and in this image you can see where is your sinus locator. And there are four different type of sinuses we have. They are ethmoid sinus, maxillary sinus, fronda sinus and spinoid sinus. All right. Ethmoid sinus is located inside the face around the area of bridge of nose between eyes. Bridge of nose between your eyes. In this picture, you can clearly see where is ethmoid sinus located. Next, maxillary sinus. This sinus located inside the face around the area of your cheek. Around the area of your cheek. Then frontal sinus. This sinus is located inside the face in the area of forehead. The upper side. Forehead. And it does not develop until around 7 years of age. Then spinoid sinus. This sinus is located deep in the face behind the nose and it does not develop until teen years. Now we will see throat. The throat is a ring like muscular tube and it is the passageway for air, food and liquid. It also helps in forming speech. The throat is made up of now we will see the parts of throats, tonsils and adenoids. Okay, tonsils and adenoids are made up of limb tissues and are located at the back of your throat. Then tonsils. So what is tonsils? Tonsils are in the back of mouth on either side of throat. Either side of throat. They are protecting this infection but have minimal functions after childhood. So it has more function in childhood tonsils. Then larynx or voice box. The larynx is a cylindrical grouping of cartilage muscles and soft tissues that contain the vocal cords. Next is epiglottis. It is a flap of soft tissues located just above the larynx or the vocal cords. This epiglottis folds down over the vocal cords to prevent food and irritants from entering the lungs. 
So these are all the parts of your throat. One more explanation. Larynx is also known as the voice box and larynx is a cylindrical structure of cartilage, muscles and soft tissue that contain the vocal cords. The vocal cords are the upper opening in the wind shape that means trachea. The passage to the lungs. Then epiglottis, it is a flap of soft tissue located just above the vocal cords. The epiglottis folds down over the vocal cords to prevent food and irritants from entering the lungs. Tonsils and adenoids, these are made up of limb tissues and are located at the back side of your mouth. And they protect against infection and but generally have little purpose beyond childhood. All right. Now we will see ear. Your ear are the organs that detect and analyze sound. It is located on each side of your head and they help with hearing and balance. Your outer ear and middle ear are separated by your eardrum and your inner ear ha houses the cochlea, vestibular nerve and semicircular canals. Your ears are on either side of your head directly over your temporal lobe. This part of your brain is responsible for hearing, speech, memory and some emotions. So now we will see the parts of your ear. It has outer ear, middle ear and inner ear. First we will see what is outer ear. Outer ear or external ear is the part of your ear that is visible. So what is visible outside? Okay, that is outer ear and that is also known as spina. P-I-N-N-A. -N -N Alright, your outer ear consists of ridged cartilage and skin and it contains glands that secrete ear wax. Its funnel shaped canal leads to your eardrum or tympanic membrane. So in this image, clearly you can see what is spina or the outer ear. So the visible part of your ear is the outer ear or external ear. It's what most people mean when they see ear. Also called oracle or pinna. And your outer ear consists of ridged cartilage, like flexible cartilage and skin. And it contains glands that secrete ear wax. Its funnel-shaped canal leads to your eardrum. Eardrum is also known as tympanic membrane. Now we will see middle ear. That is the second part of your ear. Your middle ear begins on the other side of your tympanic membrane. There are three tiny bones in this area. They are malleus, incus and stapes. They transfer sound vibrations from your eardrum to your inner ear. Your middle ear also house the use taken to which help equalizes the air pressure in your ear. So in this picture clearly you can see uh, what is uh, your, uh, your outer ear and how your middle ear looks. Now inner ear. Your inner ear contains two main parts. They are the cochlea and semicircular canals. Your cochlea is the hearing organ and this snail-shaped structure contains two fluid-filled chambers lined with tiny hairs. When sound enters, the fluid inside your cochlea causes a tiny hairs to vibrate and sending the electrical impulses to your brain. The semicircular canals, also known as okay, labyrinthine, are responsible for balance. They tell your brain which direction your head is moving. Now we will see the functions of ear. They are hearing when sound waves enter your canal, and that means your ear canal, that means from your, from your outer ear to your ear, in ear canal, your tympanic membrane is the eardrum vibrate. So when sound waves enter into your ear canal, the tympanic membrane, that means the eardrum get vibrates. This vibration passes on to the middle ear. Okay, middle ear consists of three bones. They are malleus, incus and stapes. The ossicles amplify and transmit, uh, that means the, the middle ear, okay, 
amplify and transmit these sound waves to your inner ear from the middle ear it will go to inner ear once the sound waves reach your inner ear the tiny hair cells present in the inner ear okay the stereo cilia transform this vibration into electrical energy and send it along nerve fibers to your brain so when you listen something it will from the outside ear that means out external ear that means from the uh, pinna it will go to your tympanic membrane that is known as eardrum e the eardrum will get vibrate that vibration will go to your middle ear in middle ear we have three set of tiny bones they are malleus incus and stapes so the especially the stapes will vibrate the sound again and this sound will <clears throat> amplify and transmit okay to your inner ear in inner ear once the sound waves reach the inner ear the tiny hair cells called stereo cilia okay present in the inner ear transform this vibration into electrical energy and send it along the nerve fibers to your brain the next function of your ear is balance your inner ear contains semicircular canals filled with fluid and hair like sensors when you move your head the fluid inside this loop shaped canals sloshes around and moves the hairs the hair transmit this information along the vestibular nerves to your brain finally your brain sends signals to your muscles to help you stay balanced the parts of the ear include following structures as i said external ear middle ear and internal ear okay so external ear or outer ear or pinna or auricle okay this is the outer part of your ear external auditory canal or tube so pinna continues to external auditory canal or tube this tube connects the outer ear to inside the middle ear so or especially to the eardrum tympanic membrane also called eardrum this membrane divides the external ear from middle ear so when the sound goes inside through the tube that means the uh, ear external auditory canal it will go and touches on your eardrum eardrum is also known as tympanic membrane that is the sep i mean like sa that separate your external ear and inner internal ear or inner ear the middle ear or tympanic cavity consists of three bones okay they are malleus incus and stapes and this is also known as ossicles okay that transmits sound waves to inner ear then one more thing we can see in middle ear that is eustachian tube this this canal links the middle ear with back to your nose the eustachian tube helps you equalize the pressure inside the middle ear which is needed for the proper transfer of sound waves the eustachian tube is lined with mucus just like inside of the nose and throat okay that is middle ear then inner ear okay three parts again cochlea vestibule semicircular canal cochlea the structure contains a nerve for hearing okay vestibule this has receptors for balance and semicircular canals this contains receptors for balance again so these three things we can see inner ear cochlea vestibule semicircular canal okay in middle ear you can see ossicles and eustachian tube in outer ear you can see the outer pinna and the external canal or the tube now we will see the physiology of hearing sound waves these are the vibration in air around us are collected by pinna on a side of the head and are funneled into the ear canal the sound waves make the eardrum vibrate the eardrum is so sensitive to sound vibration in the ear canal that it can detect even the faintest sound it can also replicate even the most complex of sound vibration pattern the eardrum vibration caused by sound wave move the chain of tiny bones okay that is ossicles malleus incus and stapes in the middle ear transferring the sound vibration into cochlea of the inner ear this happens because the last of three bones in the chain especially the stapes as the stapes vibrates it makes the fluid in the cochlea move in a wave like manner and this stimulates the micro uh, microscopically small hair hair cells 
the hair cells in the cochlea are turned to respond to different sound based on their pitch or frequency of sound high pitch sounds will stimulate the hair cells in the lower part of the cochlea low pitch sound will stimulate hairs in the upper part of the cochlea when each hair cell detect the pitch or frequency of the sound to which it's turned to respond it generates nerve impulse this travels intensely along the auditory nerve these nerve impulses follow a complicated pathway in the brain stem before arriving at the hearing center of the brain the auditory cortex this is where the streams of nerve impulses are converted into meaningful sound all of this happens within tiny fraction of seconds almost instantly after sound wave first enter our ear canal it is very true to say that ultimately we hear with our brain we hear with our brain in a fraction of second all these process will happen so air will enter into your ear uh, opinna from pinna to your external tube or, or the canal from there to tympanic membrane from the tympanic membrane to malleus incessans stapes from malleus incessans stapes to cochlea from cochlea to the cilia from cilia the the, the hair will vibrate and wave like motion will develop and that hair will uh, that hair will change this voices into electrical impulses okay electrical impulses will be generated there and it will go to brain especially the auditory cortex and the brain will detect the sound and within a fraction of second all these things will happen and in conclusion we could say we are here we here with our brain okay so these are all the parts and the physiology of ear nose and throat All right guys so next time with other topic thank you